Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the SHU Student Athlete Sit-Down Series. My name is Dan Gardella. Happy to be joined by a rising senior on the Sacred Heart women's tennis team, Kira Tobaya. Kira, thanks so much for joining me. How are you doing during this time, and, and how has your offseason gone? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so far, I've been doing well. I've uh, just kind of been keeping busy. I've been keeping up with the workouts that uh, Coach Gibson, our strength and conditioning coach, has given us. Um, been trying to get out on the tennis court. Luckily, tennis was one of the first sports to actually open up. Um, I'm here in New York, so I uh, got out on the tennis courts probably around May and uh, was able to start hitting a little bit with a few other girls uh, from the area who are also at different colleges for tennis. So it's, it's been good. I've been keeping busy that way. <laughs> Now, tennis is one of those sports that you compete in the fall as well as the spring. And obviously the news coming down just a couple of days ago that the Northeast Conference postponed their fall sports. Walk me through where you were and, and, and your emotions when you found out that you weren't going to be able to compete in the fall. Yeah, so um, I actually, I was coming back from work one day. Uh, I got the text from um, Coach. He sent uh, that the NECs was going to be canceling play for the fall. Um, luckily for us, we mostly play in the spring, um, but we still do have a lot of invitationals and um, we end up having like ITA regionals and stuff in the fall. Um, so it was a bit of a disappointment, but um, I'm looking forward to hopefully a spring season. We'll see what happens. Um, but overall, I guess I still just want to stay focused on the tennis court, try to do my best to make the best of the situation and um, looking forward to meeting my new teammates too in the fall, hopefully and uh, just working with them and getting focused for the spring season. While you do play a majority of your meets and your competitions in the spring, how valuable is it, though, to have that fall season to maybe work out any of the rust that you may have from the off season? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely extremely valuable. Um, having the invitationals, you get to play a lot more matches compared to, you know, just a dual match. You have some of us just have a singles or just a doubles. Maybe you'll play both. Um, but no, the invitationals are definitely helpful. It kind of gets the nerves out um, for the first part of the season. Um, I'm going to miss them, but hopefully we can play some practice matches or something with the team. Um, but it's definitely, it definitely, like I said, helps to get the nerves out and um, gets us ready for the spring season. I'm usually, I usually, my freshman and sophomore years, I've always been played, like playing my best tennis by the end of spring season. So it definitely helps. Well, let's go back to your, your previous season. You led the team in wins and in individual matches. You were tied for the lead on the team in doubles matches. Describe how you were able to take that step up and, and emerge as sort of that leader and, and produce so much for the team last year. Mm -hmm. um, it was really a work in progress. I actually, as I said before, I I tend to start the season slow. I wasn't uh, doing too well in the fall of beginning of last year. I um, just really focused. I knew what I wanted to do on the tennis court and what I wanted to do for my team. Um, so I just focused on, you know, being more consistent on the court, um, keeping those strokes more clean, focusing on the ball rather than just where I want to hit it. And um, that was definitely an important step to putting myself in the right direction towards um, getting those wins for the team. Sometimes you don't always have a great day during the match, but you just have to think strategically and kind of, if you see a weakness that, you know, opponent has, you want to make sure that you exploit that weakness and um, just come out the winner at the end. Um, so I really focus on that. My teammates are really helpful in supporting me, um, you know, on and off the court. It helps a lot. You know, tennis is a very individual sport, but having the team, you know, your teammates on the sideline cheering for you, it really helps a lot and um, gets you through the match to get the win. So obviously looking at your, your roster, I mean, it's only 10 girls. You guys are very, it's a very close knit group. And like you said, tennis can be an individual sport and it also can be a team sport with singles and doubles. How do you turn that into a team sport, whether you are an individual and you're cheering on, your other teammates or you're in doubles and you have to kind of find that chemistry to, to gel when it really matters. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's tough. It's an individual sport. You're out there on your own, but um, overall it is important to have your teammates on the sidelines cheering for you. Um, so one day we, uh, 
were in the strength and conditioning room with Coach Gibson. Probably after a rough week, maybe we all weren't giving 100% effort in the weight room, but um, Coach Gibson kind of pulled us all to the side and was like, I want to see you guys cheering for each other. I want you guys, you know, supporting one another. He goes, I know it's an individual sport, but overall you need your teammates to have your back all the time so that everyone can succeed and everyone can do the best that they can. You know, if someone's having a bad day, you have to go and be the teammate to go and bring them up and get them excited for the day. And then vice versa, maybe if you're having a bad day, someone will help you. And, and it's great. And it's really transitioned, I think, towards the team. And, you know, we really would get a little rowdy during those matches, um, supporting everyone. And um, also in doubles, same thing. You go from singles out on your court by yourself and then into a doubles match. And, uh, you know, you have different teammates sometimes. So uh, something that happened this year since we didn't get to this past year, since we didn't get to conferences, uh, we were testing out a lot of different people on the team to see who would work as the best doubles team um, for different positions. So I ended up having a few different doubles partners throughout the season. And I think that was really important for me um, because we got to kind of combine our strategies on the court and come up with the best solution for how we wanted to play our matches. And with that, I think I ended up creating stronger bonds with a lot of my teammates that way. When you're playing doubles and you, like you said, you had a lot of different uh, teammates that you were playing doubles with. What was the biggest thing that you looked for or hoped to see from your, your teammate when you're playing doubles to know that you had that, that chemistry? Mm -hmm. I think for me, I like to keep a very positive outlook on the court, whether, you know, tennis is never going to be a perfect game. You're always going to have errors in tennis. And um, I like to always just keep a positive outlook, keep my head up on the court. And I really enjoy working with um, a lot of teammates who always have high spirits on the court. You know, maybe we, we didn't get the last game, but okay, we're going to get the next one. Like, let's keep going, keep going. And um, I think that's really exciting. And even though I have a positive outlook, I tend to sometimes be more quiet on the court as well. And, um, you know, then having a teammate who's a little more loud, a little more, you know, rowdy on the court, it's, it's exciting. It kind of balances. It's a good balance between the two, um, which I think is really great. And, I, and I'll leave with this question that out of the 10 players that were on your team last year, eight of them were upperclassmen. And now you obviously going into your senior year, you've had a lot of time with a lot of your teammates since you've been at Sacred Heart. How have you seen not only yourself, but your other upperclassmen and your teammates grow as you've gone on throughout your career at SHU? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's been so much growth between everyone. Um, just from being off court with them, everyone creating these bonds of friendship. Um, we all sit upstairs on the pit couches a lot before and after practice and um, just getting to know one another more and leads to more even more relationships on the court as well um, just in terms of ability and mental strength I've seen so much growth um, having the seniors uh, this past year they really helped a lot to kind of keep us focused on the big picture of um, just doing as best we could on the court and um, no, I think it was definitely really amazing. And I'm looking forward to this season. We have one senior who's returning, Brie Loria. Uh, she'll be coming back for this year. And um, Lauren Santar Sierra, Laura Crive, Morgan Volo. Um, I'm really excited to kind of start up a new season with everyone and uh, welcome our seven new recruits as well. Um, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be different. Uh, we definitely lost a few people on the team. Um, and we also have Mari Fay too, who's going to be a rising uh, junior as well. And um, she's going to be great uh, for helping everyone and welcoming everyone to the team. So I'm excited for what's to come this year. I think it's going to be really great. And I think we're going to hopefully have a successful season. That's really great to hear. And it sounds like there's a lot of excitement buzzing around the women's tennis team at Sacred Heart. Well, Kira, thanks so much for joining me. Best of luck in your off-season training. Hopefully we get to see you guys compete in the spring uh, during 2021. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.